The requirements of A9, which are Physical Environmental Security in 27001, can be broken down into two subheadings. You have Secure Areas and Equipment Security. So let's look at both of those in turn. Secure Areas is about actually protecting the physical environment in which your assets are housed. That probably means your building or certainly your office environment. Again, it's an area of the standard that many people are perhaps hesitant and reluctant to get involved in. And most, most people will say, I don't have a background in the security services or the forces, and therefore, what do I know about physical security? It's a very important part of the standard to look at and understand. It's actually very simple. It's common sense in most cases. And people are often put off by the jargon used around this. So, for example, the standard refers to security perimeters. Security perimeters are simply doors and walls, things that will physically stop you going in. A locked door is a perimeter. It also talks about access control, for example, and access control, again, is very simple. It's the means of moving through a perimeter, so it can be a door. And if you have an access card, that's an access control point. So again, the jargon can be off-putting, but when you look at it, it's really just common sense. So ISO 27001 is asking you to look at the risks to your organization around physical access to the, to the assets that you want to protect, and where it's appropriate, put in controls to try and limit or control and manage people's physical access to your assets. Now, if we look at the second subsection, that's on equipment security. And if we look at that, again, an awful lot of it is common sense. It's just simply asking you to look at where your equipment is housed and reassure yourself that it's housed in the right place. It's not near any water pipes, for example, if you're housing your comms room. Or your comms room where your important IT equipment isn't sitting adjacent to a toilet or underneath a kitchen, for example, where there may be a water leak. So again, it's just common sense in many cases. Other clauses under section two look at things like cabling management. You know, where are your cables running? And if, for example, you're an organization which is highly dependent on internet or accessibility over the internet, and you have one single cable, is that running across your front lawn or the front garden where perhaps a JCB could dig it up and sever your communications? So again, it's common sense. It's also looking at things like equipment maintenance, for example, and who maintains, or first of all, is your equipment maintained appropriately? And if it is, who's doing that? And are they qualified to do that? And finally, the last clause is under this section. Look at what happens when equipment leaves the premises. You've spent a lot of time and a lot of resources trying to protect the equipment when it's on and inside your office environment. What you want to make sure is if someone takes it out of your office, it's also protected appropriately.